Hi, welcome to CAS 133, Columbia Gorge Community College, The Dells, Oregon. Mrs. Hewitt, instructor. For this video, we are going to be focused on the journal, the 1321 journal. I know it's mentioned in the introduction video for week number three. However, students continue to have issues with it. And with the new Moodle, there are some changes that have happened. So this is going to hopefully help with that. You will notice that it now says it's not available unless you complete a couple of assignments. It may be two, three, four, five, depending on what the week has. It's hard to do a reflection on the work you have completed if you've not completed the work. And students that do not do the work and then try to throw the journal in at the last minute so that like it's not accepted late. So I'll write a journal entry, talk in really broad terms like, well, this was an interesting week. I learned a lot. We worked in Word. We made a letter, i.e. you can look at the picture in the book and figure out what the topic was. That's not acceptable. So this is locked until such time as you have submitted the required work. And then once you've submitted the required work, the link will magically open and you can get in here. Now, there's some directions to be followed that sometimes people seem to not review or not remember, so we will go over them again. You are to have at least 150 words. That is the minimum of minimums. More is better, up to a reasonable point. Somewhere in the 150 to maybe even 300 would be a good range. Anything much over that, you're talking too much. You need to tell me three themes or three things you learned in the unit. During this week, what did you learn? Now, obviously, if we're focused on textbook, textbook projects, that's going to be the big focus. Tell me two ways you're going to use this. Not general, broad, well, someday when I get a job in an office, I might need this. Think of specific examples of when you could actually use this. Oh, I'm retyping all of great grandma's recipes, and now I can put the, the title bold centered. Perfect use. Great. Or I'm taking writing 121, and we have to write a research paper. I've never known what the MLA format was, and now I can use it. Perfect. Great information. Remember, you need two of those things, and they cannot be a repeat of the same things. And then tell me one idea you would teach to somebody, not who it is necessarily, although you can say that, and not something kind of hypothetical like, oh, I would teach them everything. It's all so useful. Well, that may be true, but do you really have that much time? And do they have that much time? And are they that interested? Oh, um, I'm working with a lady at work where she's trying to set up a menu every week and she just kind of like uses a space bar, thunk, 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 to get everything centered. And it's always a scrambled mess when any of the rest of us try to open it. I could teach her how to just leave it left aligned and then highlight and center. Perfect use of teaching that skill. Not only would it avoid everybody getting this mess, I'm sure it would make her life a whole lot easier as well. That would be a specific example of something you could teach. And it would be a fairly quick and easy thing to teach, but would make a difference. Then the idea of making each question into a paragraph with at least one line sign spacing. So I've done up an example for you. And in this example, you'll notice the first thing is said. Then secondly, I learned. And thirdly, I learned. So there are the three. So they're easy to spot. I will probably use what I've learned. I could teach. And the big thing is you can just hit right there and you can see how many words. So this one has 182 words. Now, if I was going to take this and move it over to oops, Moodle, I want to have at least one space, but I may need to have two simply because Moodle will steal spaces. So I do my copy and I come over here and I go to submit it. And when I go to do that, I want to make sure I hit the, you know, submit button. And I look at what I've submitted. If it doesn't have a space, go back and put an extra one. 
or just always put two spaces in. It's okay if it has an extra one. It's really hard to read on screen with smaller print, a big blop of text, if you haven't noticed that. If you give me a big blop of text, it is much harder for me to find your first, second, and third, two ways, and one way to teach. If you make it hard for me to read, it's hard for me to grade. It's hard for you to get a good grade, and I do take points off for that. Then it talks about the different types of grading, so there's some different things that can make you lose points. Skipping a whole section, or not telling the two things, or kind of doing a vague, oh, I could use this someday in the future type of statement. Um, it's probably not going to get you full credit. If you get less than 14 points, you have a failing grade. Those don't happen too often, but it can. It's usually a combination of too short, blop of text, skipped areas, maybe poorly written with grammatical, capital, spelling errors all over in it, and all the points kind of just add up together. So please make sure I suggest you type in Word, just like it says right here, and then Take advantage of that spell check, proofread, those types of things. Hopefully this will help you do better with your points. Make sure that you have completed the work before you attempt to open the link. If you send me an email that says, I can't get the link to open, I will send you an email back telling you to watch this video because obviously you have not completed the work. So hopefully this helps and... Off you go with journals for the rest of the term.